aquifer is underground layer of rocks and gravel that hold a lot of water. Okay? And that's where Spokane gets 100% of its water. It comes from the ground. So if we went outside to recess, out into the field, and we started digging and digging, we'd, we could find our aquifer. And what it would look like is a bunch of really wet rock and gravel. In this picture, they've kind of cut the earth in half, opened it up so we can see what's happening underground. If you look very closely, you can see some of that water is soaking down underground. It's being pulled by gravity underground. How else could the water get in the ground besides from rivers? Rain. Rain, exactly. Days like today, some of that rainwater will soak underground and can be collected in the aquifer. So the water that comes out of that sink right there, that has to travel all the way from underground in the aquifer, right, up to a tower, and then through another set of underground pipes to get here. If you're driving towards the valley, you see a lot of them off the highway that are standing up tall. The big white and red ones. By splashdown. Yeah. By splashdown, exactly. Yeah, lots over there. Okay. So that's how we get our, our clean water, right, from the ground. What happens to our waste water? The water that goes back down the sinks, down the drain. What happens to our, our waste water? Where does that go? The waste water. Go back down to, into, into a river or a and then it goes into the aquifer. It could, but think of it, this is our dirty water. This is really this is gross. Do we do we want to put it into our river or into our aquifer? Over here. Goes down to the sewer. Yep, to another set of underground pipes into the sewer. Then where does it go? No, this it's still dirty. It goes to the sewer. And this is our, our wastewater, it's dirty. What should we do with it before we do anything? Exactly, we have to clean it. That's Spokane's water cycle. That's how we use and reuse our water, okay? We pump it up from the ground and then we send it to the water treatment plant to be cleaned and then put it back into the environment. I want you to go ahead and take your maps and flip them to the other side. I see Spokane. Yeah. Does anyone know what this big blue thing is in our map? Argo! What is it? It's an aquifer boundary up here. So it's the Spokane Valley Rathdrum Prairie Aquifer. That is the big, long, fancy name of our aquifer. Whoa. Because okay. it goes all the way from Rathdrum, Idaho, through Spokane. Pretty big. Can you find the city of Spokane and put your finger on it? Perfect. Now on this map, it looks like we're a tiny island surrounded by water. Is, yeah. that, is that true? <laughs> no. Okay. Remember where the aquifer is? Underground. Underground, exactly. Okay, the rivers and the lakes on this map are what put water back into the ground in addition to rain. But that's what recharges our aquifer, meaning it puts water back into the aquifer. Remember what the aquifer was made out of? Rocks and water. And what's sand? See any tiny pieces of rock? Exactly. So this is our first layer of our aquifer. So your job is to make observations. I want you to watch how the, the sand and the water interact together. Because if you put sand in water, it might turn into mud. So, what's your observation? The liquid sinks down into the solid, into the sand, because there's not that much water. Okay, I want to hear some of your observations now. It looks like it's starting to turn into mud. So the texture changed a little bit? A little. Mm-hmm. It doesn't look like how it was. Like the water was a lot, and then now it like sank down. It sank down into the sand instead of going out. The sand kind of soaked up the water, right? Yeah, it absorbed it. That's our fancy science word, absorb. All right, so the rocks in the aquifer, just like the sand in your cup, absorb the water. They hold on to it, okay? And it works just like a sponge. If you took a dry sponge and put it on a puddle of water, what happens? It, it, it absorbs it. 
it soaks it up. Now we have a new landform in our cup. This is surface water. What do you think that represents? Remember, we're in Spokane. What would this represent? Or like the land, like the cement and all the grass. Yeah, the very top of our hill. That's where we are, right at Garfield. And then we drive along our city and we see this lovely flowing body of water called the no, we can't see that. It's underground. Spoken River. Spoken River. Yes. And that sand layer, what is this? The what? Aquifer. Aquifer. Awesome. Coming around to contaminate, I'm going to pour oil on Garfield, right? On that top layer. Your job again is to make observations. Watch what happens to the oil. You guys, look how far this is contaminating. Yours is almost to the bottom. Look at it. Look at it. I want to hear what happened when I dumped oil onto Garfield. What happened? It went into the water, into the rocks, and now into the aquifer. So now it went into the river? It went through the rocks? It went into the ocean, then to the land, then to the river. No, the aquifer, not the river. What are some other contaminants you can think of besides oil? Think of things around the house, maybe things your parents use that you know that are, are dangerous. Like you couldn't drink them, they would hurt you. What else? If you mix my mom's pills, because she's a nurse, if you mix them together, and drink it. Oh well, yeah, you don't want to do that ever. That's very dangerous. Or you know, some people will, if their uh, their medicine's old, will dump it down the toilet to get rid of it. That's really bad too because yeah, it goes to the water treatment plant where they can't clean out all those chemicals. Okay, so we don't want to do that. What some people do is they have a mop and they have a bucket and they use it. And what they'll do with the bucket is they'll just go and throw it in their yard. And then that would just ruin the aquifer. What about outside around springtime? What's that thing that we use that makes the grass really green and beautiful? Oh, fertilizer. Fertilizer, exactly. Not good for our water either. Starting today, what can you do to protect the aquifer? Usually I always go outside and ride my bike with my friends and all tell them all about it and um, tell them what to do. Exactly. You can teach someone now. My sister. Your sister, your brother, your mother, your father, your grandma, your grandpa, friends, anyone about the aquifer. And that'll help because the more people that know about it, the more people there will be protecting it. Great idea. Can we all do that? Yeah. Yes. yes.